Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am Nicole Thornton, sales manager and trainer for Atlanta, Georgia. Make sure to follow me at Your Real Estate Style Pro. And hey, guys, this is Naisha Clark, um, trainer and coach for the Co Realty Group Orlando. Um, make sure you follow me at the Right Realtor ATL FL. Today, guys, we have some amazing guests joining us. Tina Porch, who is the business development and growth representative, as yes. well as Jason David, who is the inspection manager with RIA. Y'all, they're going to drop some good bombs on us for new construction. So y'all get ready. I'm excited. This is going to be a lot of fun today. And guys, make sure to subscribe and follow us at Closing the Gap with the Cole Realty Group. And before we get into the juices and berries, so to say, um, we're going to go ahead and go over our stat highlights. We're going to go over um, all of our new con new under contracts for January 2022, our January 18th update for all of our sales, and also the Cole Realty Group squad announcements and Zillow sales. Okay, now for some fun stuff. We have a total of 13 transactions that are under contract for January, totaling 3 million four forty five eight eighty five. dollars We've got Nikisha with three under contract. Bree has two. Wanda has three. Charisma with two. Naisha with one. I have one. Henry has one as well. And for our transactions closed, for January 11th update, totaling three million nine hundred and sixty-three thousand seven hundred dollars, we have Deidre Carter with three close, equaling seven hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars. We have Kinesia LeBlanc um, with one close at six hundred and thirty-five thousand five hundred dollars. Dina with one close at one hundred and eighty-five fifty dollars. Nakisha Hilton, the Jamaican rock star, with two close with seven hundred and sixty thousand. Sharonda very own Orlando agent with one close $465,900. Henry with one close at 160. Charisma Eam has two close at $705,000. Brandy Perry, BP herself, $215,000. And y'all see our very own coach with one close $40,250. Amazing Ooh. job. Like we are really <laughs> starting are uh, 2022 it. off really good. Yes, super excited. Okay, so guys, you know, at the beginning of the year, we introduced our squad and we have Brandy Squad. She has one Zillow transaction closed at 215,000. Charisma Squad, she has one closed at 405,000. Nikisha is leading the pack. She's got one closed at 440,000. We can't wait to see everyone on the leaderboard. And guys, remember, this is Zillow sales only, only Zillow sales, you know, so this allows us to be able to see what we got going on Zillow, you know, but still take it in consideration. We still have a lot of others that's under contract and things that we sold. That's not Zillow. Yes. Can't wait to see what happens next. Okay. So guys, the do's and don'ts of new construction inspections. But first, before we dive into the meat and potatoes of the meeting today, we have Tina, the business development and growth representative with Residential Inspectors of America. And she's gonna tell us a little bit more about their company. Tina, turn it over to you. Hi, thank you guys so much for having us today. And just again, again, my name is Tina Porch with Residential Inspector of America. And a little bit about RIA, we're actually a family owned home inspection company that has been around since 1989. And we have done over 150,000 inspections. And we actually have over 40 inspectors on our team. So what does this mean for you? We have been offering from same day to even next day home inspections. We understand with these short due diligence periods, it's been a little challenging. So we just like to make sure that our home buyers and agents are accommodated. Now, we are also home of the $100,000 in free warranty coverage. And yes, 
$100,000 in free warranty coverage, and it comes free with every home inspection that we do. And what we offer, yes, we offer a one-year full structural warranty, our five-year roof leak warranty, our 90-day mechanical warranty, our 90-day mold growth warranty, as well as our 90-day main sewer and water line warranty. Okay, and let me ask you just, hold on. Okay. You said this comes with the inspection. Yes, it comes wow. free with every home inspection that we do. Okay. That's a game changer. Yes, you can change it. Is. Now, how it works. So say, for instance, with our 90-day mechanical warranty, we come out, we inspect the AC unit, and at the time of inspection, the AC unit is working properly fine. But let's say 60 days later, the AC unit goes out. So what does your home buyer do? They just give us a call and submit a claim, and our office will help walk your home buyers through the claim process. It's just that easy. So what this does is it gives your home buyers that peace of mind and help save you as the agent time and energy as well. Now, is there a deductible? Yes, we do have different deductibles for each one of the warranties. And what I can do after the presentation is actually make sure to email this information over to you. So yes, each uh, warranty comes with a deductible, correct. I love and, it. Yes. And you can also see my information down at the bottom. If you have any questions or if you need to go into any of the, um, the warranties in detail, feel free to please reach out to me. All right. Any questions for now? I don't see any questions in the chat, but I will make sure to add your email address, Tina, um, as well, so that everyone will have it. And we will definitely be contacting you because like I said, I know this is a game changer. Would you agree, coach? Um, yes, very, very much so. Yeah. You know, like you don't, you don't see this much at all. I've never seen this. So um, to be able to have a warranty that backs the work that, you know, you all do is absolutely amazing. Again, it definitely will make sure that our clients, you know, have that peace of mind, you know, mm -hmm. especially with dealing with, you know, um, the unknowns. So exactly. Very important. Do we, have to, do we have to pay for this warranty? The client office pay for this warranty upfront or separate from the inspection? No, no. Again, it comes free with every home inspection that we do. Mm -hmm. And actually, oh. last um, last year, if I'm not mistaken, Jason, we paid out um, over one hundred thousand dollars in warranty coverage for uh, different inspections. So this is just free money that actually went out to um, home buyers. Yep, that's correct. Wow. It's nice to have uh, free warranties actually pay out. You know, there's always fine print, there's always fun stuff going on, yes. but you know, it's uh, it, it, it's nice that there's at least some, some uh, a buffer or a blanket that these clients can have uh, to have a little bit better peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, awesome. Well, without further ado, um, I would love to actually introduce uh, Jason David. Uh, he's our actually our inspection and service director with RIA, and he has actually been with us for over 10 years. And Jason David has been an inspector for eight of those years, and Jason has done over 5,000 inspections, okay? And Please. Jason has, yes. <laughs> That's a lot of inspections. And Jason, he has- I do one a year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he has 10 certifications, including the ICC R5 combination inspection. So uh, without further ado, I would love to introduce uh, Jason David. And let's see here. I think this is his 10 year uh, challenge photo that he has going on here. Yeah, yeah that one's a little dated. I, 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 do. I, I feel like I'm 11 in there, but that's all right. Yeah. It's okay. You can see who I am. Absolutely. You, you're lucky you get the beard. My wife told me, she says, I'm not allowed to take the beard off. I look 10 years younger than, than that even. You know? Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> nice. So Jason, the floor I'm is up. all yours. Yes. Well, thank you, Tina, and thank you, Nisha and Nicole. 
Talk about an awesome group that you guys had. I mean, that's some good numbers that you got from the beginning. You got 13 yeah. contracts January. You got some good to narrows on the board mm -hmm. and uh, even closes uh, that, you, that you finished out this year. So congratulations to all of you. And, and uh, that's spectacular. And I appreciate you allowing us to uh, uh, take some time and, and hopefully provide you with some, some information that you can take home with you and take to work with you for that matter. So uh, the topic is new construction of course, and uh, we, we can make an effort to go over some do's and don'ts, mm -hmm. uh, but it's really more, for me, a, a, an introduction to you guys. Uh, some, I think I heard, heard that there are uh, some some newer agents and some agents that are a bit more experienced. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to ask, and really kind of inquire with you guys, first of all, does anybody think that new construction inspections are a good idea? I do. I do. But, Anybody else? Think, right, go anybody, ahead and chime in the chat. Else think that, how about, let me ask you this. Does anybody else think that new construction inspections are really not that great of an idea and they might be a waste of time? It's okay. Absolutely not, because I just bought a new construction home. Nice. Okay. I had some issues. Congratulations. Well, not just, but April. <laughs> Last April. Wow. So you believe that the inspections are important? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I'll be honest, Jason, I don't do a ton of new construction. I have been doing a couple more lately. And the most recent one that the buyer had, there was an issue with um, the cabinets and some other things in the home. So mm -hmm. I can see how and why it's so important um, to have them in new construction as well as resale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, to be honest with you, it really is. You know, um, it, it's amazing how many issues we actually find um, in new construction, uh, how many code violations that we find in new construction um, and to help give these clients peace of mind. So it's um, in, in my mind, in, in, in the, you know, a few years that I've been doing it, and a few inspections that I've been doing, I've realized that doing new construction, uh, both pre-drywall and new home final inspections are extremely important. Extremely important, in my opinion. Josh, push ahead, please. So the types that we do as a company, uh, we do pre-drywall inspections, and we'll go over that. New home file inspections, and then we can do a one-year warranty inspection. Anybody know what a one-year home warranty inspection is, or a one one-year warranty is from the builder? That's where please. they they have the. Um... You have a one-year warranty from the time that you purchase a home where they come back in a year later um, to do another inspection, like, you know, for nail pops and all that good stuff, right? Yeah, it, it's exactly what it is, Nisha. Good. Thank you. Uh, I mean, it's just, it, it really is. It's that last final sayonara, <laughs> right, that the builders can eventually say is, you know, they, they want to do that last minute punch list, any nail pop cracks gaps, uh, any other issues that have come up in between uh, that that initial build and they hand over the keys. Uh, and then, you know, once once they've done that, then, you know, it, uh, it, it then you're essentially parting ways from the builder for the most part. Right. Got so, it. Um, all right, Josh, push ahead a little bit, please. So builders obligations um, and, and again, primarily regarding violations. Um, the builder is obligated to the city or the county official. They are not obligated to what us as private inspectors write up. Mm. That's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. They do not have to do what I write in my report. Because yes. the, the builder only needs the city or the county official to write off, to sign off, because we're not signing permits, right? City and county officials are signing off the permits on the final, and then they provide that certificate of occupancy. As soon as the builder gets a certificate of occupancy, then they're good and they don't have to do squat. Right? Wow. That's the amazing part. And, but you gotta, you gotta, the thing about the city and the county officials, and it's not their fault, but they're typically only out of property for 15, 20 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. They're doing like 15 and 20 a day or more. Jeez. They're in, out, boom, 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 right? Pushing mm -hmm. on to the next house. Of course, it is in their best interest to make sure they're hitting the pigs, right? Hitting all the larger violations to say, okay, I want to make sure this house isn't going to fall down, right? So if they're hitting the larger numbers, 
they may be dismissing or not even looking at some of the other items that are in the that are on the property. They just don't have time for it. All right. So it's a bit of a numbers game. Okay. So us as private inspectors, we I would like to say, along with the, you guys as real estate agents, we are their advocate, mm -hmm. right? For our clients. Mm -hmm. We are right. we are advocates for our clients. And it's important that we do our due diligence, our efforts as home inspectors to find all possible items, violations, issues mm -hmm. when it comes to the home to provide that information to the buyer for them to then bring back to the builder and say, hey, man, your city or your county official missed this. Or really more of, you know, this is what your private, my private inspector found. Can you knock this out? For me? Mm -hmm. Now, we have a lot more time. We've got a couple hours that we can go and really scrutinize and comb the house as much as we can, right? And so our list probably ends up being a good bit larger than what the officials list is going to be, right? So they'll go around with a with a spray can and they'll mark a couple of spots and they'll, they'll, they'll either, you know, pass or fail you and kind of go from there, right? Now, client expectations, right, is that they expect a perfect house. Mm -hmm. They want perfect, this brand new construction, it better be darn near perfect mm -hmm. by the time I walk in the house and you give me my keys. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And the, the curious part is, you know, it, it, it's important everybody understands that at least our clients understand that these homes are built by humans. If everything was machined and it was like an appliance, an appliance is perfect. Well, within reason, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as it's work, it works right. and it's brand new and, and you know, it's, it's got straight walls and, and this and that, and that's perfect. So not necessarily to defend the builder, but mm -hmm. walking through any of these inspections, I think the builders have rules to where they say you have to stand at least six feet away from an area where you think you find a blemish or an issue. You can't just walk right up about a foot away from the wall and say, there's a drywall, Nick, and I need you to fix that. They're gonna, a lot of them are going to say you need to stand at least six feet away in order to find everything. Because you, you, there's no way on this planet that we're going to be able to knock out every single drywall, Nick, right. and scratch and mm -hmm. boo-boo mm -hmm. and all that stuff, right? Right. It's numbers game for them, right? Mm -hmm. I will say, with all of the obligations that the builders have to only the, build, the city or the county official, they absolutely want to sell the house. And really, uh, us as inspectors, it's gotten to the point to where for our guys at RIA, mm -hmm. we are citing violations that are legitimate, right? We're citing violations. It, it, this is actually a code violation, and it's something that should be done, right? And that's when, when, when we're putting our information in the report, uh, you know, it, we'll put a code number as a reference to that particular item and the builders like it. The builders actually don't mind or don't have an issue with us, mm -hmm. you know, writing another report and saying, hey, please add this to your punch list and knock it out. They wanna make the client happy. They mm -hmm. wanna sell it, right? And of what we're providing them, as long as we're not providing them with minutia, right? And we're providing legitimate items, they're not going to disagree with us. Mm. They're going to yeah. say, yep, that's, hey, man, that's legit. I, I, mm -hmm. I need to get that. That was already on my punch list. I go, oh, good. <laughs> good for you. You know, so I don't want anybody to, to be discouraged by the obligation, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that a builder is only obligated to right. the official, right? They are definitely still willing to work with you as agents and us as inspectors and most definitely the client in order to do that. Now, are they, is this the inspections, is it normally done before they get the certificate of occupancy? And if they get the certificate of occupancy before the inspection is done, in your experience, have you seen that they're still willing to take care of the, you know, legitimate um, violations or the, the issues since they're not obligated to do so? Great question, Nation. Great question. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, so the first question is, um, do we need to be doing inspections before or after the certificate of occupancy? We can, right? Mm -hmm. So pre-dry is always done prior to CO. And then there are, it, it really varies as to when we do the final inspection, uh, as to whether we're doing it before or after the CO. Sometimes they already have it, sometimes they don't. Okay. Right? 
Mm -hmm. um, and then that second half of that, yes, builders are willing to accommodate our reports, the notes that are on our reports that state um, any of the things that are outstanding. Got it. Okay. I do have a question. Um, and this was the most recent transaction that I completed where, or in the process of completing, where the buyers were choosing their own inspector and there were certain credentials that they required right. from inspector. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Because, you know, normally like on the resale side, the buyer chooses the inspector, the seller doesn't have a, you know, issue with that. They go inspect the property and then we go on from there. And it seems like on the new construction side, that process is a little different. Like they have to approve the inspector. Yeah, great question. Great question, right? So certifications that in order for us to be able to even walk on the property, some builders don't care. They don't require any certifications. You know, I mean, you, you got to remember the state of Georgia doesn't require any certification for, for home inspection. It's scary to me, but, <laughs> oh, you know, wow. it, it, mm -hmm. it's it, the builders, a good majority of them now require even more. So they require ICC certification. Well, first of all, let me step back. Insurance, you know, we've got GL, we've got e &O, we've got all kinds of coverage. So we have our umbrella. Mm -hmm. If any one of our guys, you know, damages property or gets whatever. And then certifications, builders often are requiring ICC certification. So ICC is International Code Council. So that is a code certification in order for us to be able to walk on the property, right? And there are numerous code certifications, right? There's hundreds of different types. But for residential, it would be at least the ICC B1 residential structural inspector. Got right? it. B1 mm -hmm. structural inspector. And then past that, some builders require ASHI, which is American Society of Home Inspectors, which in my opinion is a, they're a dying company, but I, I don't really want to get it. They're a good company. They got some great stuff, but I think they're, they're trying to latch on wherever they can. And I, I don't blame anybody for doing any of that, right? Uh, and then I've had builders require drone uh, licenses, you know, in order for us to fly any, any kind of drone up there. Um, you know, we're working on that ourselves just to get on my guys' life. 40 guys. And it's a, it's a can, I, in the butt. can I ask a question? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, I tend to do a little bit more new construction. Um, just give me a pitch as it relates to, because most, most buyers don't really see the need to do an inspection on a new construction home. So it, it tends to be a little bit harder to, um, like, encourage them to do so. So just from your opinion, you know, what would be the best pitch to entice or to, to recommend for a client to, to do an um, inspection on a new construction? And also I find that most of the builders tend to make it hard for the inspectors to come in. So let me know. That. Yeah, they make it hard. <laughs> they, they love to do that, don't they? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's interesting. Uh, we were, Nisha and Nicole and I, we were all talking about that earlier this morning and so first of all, Nikki, bless. Good question. Um, I plan to address that in in the the following slides, okay. and we'll see if we can we can talk about that and and hopefully give you guys a, a better, hmm, maybe more teeth on how mm -hmm. to to suggest or promote uh, a new home inspection and even a pre pre drywall inspection uh, to justify all of that, right? Um, but yeah, builders, they don't, they, half the time they don't want us there because they don't want us to find more stuff because that means more work for them. They got to, mm -hmm. you know, because they're on a time crunch. They right. want done. Right. They yeah. want to hurry up, put drywall. They got subs going here, 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 and here. They're on, they're on, they got to go. Mm -hmm. And all we're going to do is slow them down. And what's the, what's amazing to me is um, in the conversation that we had earlier, I didn't realize that those that build the home are all contracted out you know like i in it's one thing when you know you're dealing with someone that's doing something um custom but when you're talking about like a track builder like i didn't realize i thought that they was probably employed by the company to do it but they're all subcontractors you know yeah. that's that's interesting yeah which, it's makes pretty it, amazing. which makes it even more important to make sure that, you know, these new constructions inspections are being done. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it is important. Yep. Great thought, Nation. And, you know, I also think it's important because it's like they're, it, I know it seems like it's taking them forever to put them together, but it's like once they get the materials, things go so fast. And it's almost they like slanging these houses, Nicole. Right. They it's like quantity them. over quality. You know what I mean? And it's, I tell my buyers all the time that, you know, the resale, the foundation of the resale seems to be just a little bit better than the new construction. And that's one of the reasons why I plan on encouraging them just to make sure that the sol the meat and potatoes, the foundation, you know, is solid. And to your point, that pre-drywall inspection, I love that because, yep. you know, you can expect that as well. And you, it's always like, I always I almost think of it like you rely on the experts um, to make sure that everything is going as it should and that the construction is great quality. We don't know that as real estate professionals and they don't know that as buyers. And so allowing the experts to come in and assist us with that process, I think is a really good idea. That was awesome. Yes, every bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Josh, next one, please. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna push past some cosmetic. I think I'm running a little little low on on time here. Um, so cosmetic versus violation. What we look for versus what the client is expecting to look for. The client does care about you know it, you know there's a there's a chip in this cabinet or there's a chip in the drywall or there's a paint issue or nicks or dents or scratches or any of that type of stuff. And then what we are looking for, as I mentioned earlier, is an actual code violation. If I can put a number to it, because we've got a very big book. The Bible. It's the, it's the home inspector Bible, right? If I can put a code number to it, it's going to go in my report. Violation. Mm -hmm. Right? And then all in all, the, the builders, they should be doing their own PC checks, quality control, right? Mm -hmm. So that's when they're going to do their own walk. They're going to poke it out the house on their own. Then they should be doing a walk with a client mm -hmm. where the client gets permission to, to poke it out the house too. It's so mm -hmm. funny. It was wild just to write polka dot. I'd never written polka dot before. <laughs> Uh, but but that's that's the good part is that there is a time and a place for those. But what is important is for when the client realizes when we're there, we're not there to look at cosmetics. We're right. there to look at actual violations. And then they can follow up with their cosmetics with their builder. And then again, with one year warranty, they can follow up with additional cosmetics, right? For all the, the paint and all that fun stuff um, on their one year. And then they're good to go. Nice. Next, please. All right, pre-drywall. Um, pre-drywall is my favorite uh, type of new inspection. And it is, I think, the most important. I can tell, Jason, you perked up when you said pre-drywall. Oh, my goodness. I, <laughs> this it, is it, like, this it right here, baby. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to nerd out on you. If you, if you, you got to be careful because I can talk about this. All right. So um, pre-drywalls, I think, are the most important because... This is the area that will then get covered up that nobody will ever, ever see again. If there are issues, and I've seen plenty of larger structural issues, real issues, things that should have been absolutely addressed, that just get covered up with drywall and you never know if anybody did anything with them, right? That's the scary part. So as Neisha was saying to you, you know, the, the framing is is really the item that you look at the most when we do the pre-dry. And we get this little window, right? We get this little pocket from the builder that says, okay, you get to go between X date and X date because we're putting up drywall a few days later. Hurry up. Mm -hmm. You know? And it, so we'll, we'll go in as fast as we can, knock it out, give that punch list to the builder the same day, and hopefully they have those days knock out all of those repairs. And then what we suggest, if it's possible for the client to do the walk with the builder during that pre-drywall inspection with mm -hmm. them, right? So if, if, if the client can walk with the builder, one, prepping it out, looking at the plans, I want a pendant light here, I want an outlet here, all that fun stuff. But then the opportunity to look at the, 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 the framing one last time before they put drywall up to know where everything is supposed to be going. So they get to look over plans and what we suggest is that they go over the inspection report mm -hmm. along with the builder during that last walk before drywall goes up. Did you do it? Did you do it? Is it checked off? All mm -hmm. that fun stuff. Got it. So, right. um, so guys, just to kind of piggyback off of what Jason said, understand this pre drywall inspections is not going to be um, suggested by the builder. 
It is right. something that you're going to have to tell the builder mm -hmm. that you want to do. And in all the new constructions I've done, I have never, ever right. had someone suggested. I just had a client. We actually closed next week. And he got extremely upset because in his experience of buying homes, I think this is like his fourth home that he's bought. He's bought. The builder has always done a pre drywall inspection. And he's like, well, Nisha, why didn't the builder do an inspection? I'm like, huh? Right. I, you know, I it wow. was like foreign to me because I've never had it happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not something the builder's going to say, oh, listen, make sure you're here between this date and this date to do your pre drywall, pre drywall inspection, because this is when drywall is going to go up. No, you have to make sure you're having the proper conversations with your clients at the time of contract. So you can have the proper conversations with the builder at the time of contract. So they know that you want to do a pre drywall inspection. So when we're having the conversations with our clients in regards to, cause I know with me, when I do new construction, I tell my clients, listen, when that framing go up, that is the time to go visit the house, put all your, your, yes. your, your inspirational messages on the, on the, yeah. the, the framing, you know, all your scriptures that you like and all that. So when the drywall goes that up, it's so embedded beautiful. into the foundation yeah. of the home, right? I do that all the time. Well, guess what I'm about to add to my spill? I'm about <laughs> yeah. to add that was beautiful and and well said and i i really encourage the same i you know i i, I think this hopefully addresses nikki bless's con uh, comment that um you know pre-drywall issues get covered up and we will never see them mm -hmm. the issue then present or could present itself 10 years down the road five years down the road right and we could have caught that in the beginning, gotten that done. Other, you know, now ten years later down the road, it could be ten thousand dollars worth of work. Who knows? And you know, there's a great example um, that one of my clients used when we were just talking about um, resale versus new construction. And she was saying that she had a friend who purchased a home, new construction. Two years later, the basement flooded. So yeah. in your your expertise, had there been like I guess a pre drywall. Um, maybe there's a possibility it could have uncovered something that was covered up, I guess. With the there's new always that, always there's something. always that potential, you know, yeah. I, it, it's amazing when we see homes that are 10 and 20 years old mm -hmm. and we know what the, the requirements were when, during the new construction or the, the construction at the time of, mm -hmm. and we're like, and the builder didn't do those items. And then we're seeing the result of that lack of application. Mm -hmm. That is, it's just tough. You know, I don't like it. And we pop them yeah. and then we say silly builders, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody's going to talk mm -hmm. about whatever, right? So yeah. Nisha was mentioning subs earlier on framing. Yes, framing is always going to, they're going to have different subs. Who knows who, you, who they're going to use? Not why important. One, that the city inspector comes, the builder does come back and check their work because they've got superintendents that'll go and mark everything. And then I very much encourage a private inspector like RIA specific uh, <laughs> and to come and do a pre drive inspection. The HVAC guys, plumbing, electrical, those are all licensed trades that we typically do not find real issues with those. Huh. It's the framing around those that can get affected. Plumbers love to cut holes in, in, in framing, um, but you know they, they, for the most part, have been doing really darn well the past, uh, past three years. Awesome. So question. So um, if you do a pre drywall inspection, that's still also going to be covered under the warranty, right? Yeah. Got you. OK. And then I have another question. So you mentioned the three inspections that go along with the new construction. Is there a cost for each one or is there just one cost yeah. for the total inspection? Yeah, they're separate. They're separate. Got it. Yeah, I say the pre dry is cheaper than a new home final is going to be. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, new home file and even the one year walk uh, warranty inspection is they're both full pop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because they're, I mean, they're, they're different visits and, different. you know, the, the one year is a, a year down the road. So, you know, what better happens. So. Okay. Yeah. Good question. All right. All right. Josh, you guys, do I have much time left? Um, We got about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, new home final inspections. Really, our focus is to figure out whether the builder actually did the work correctly. 
um, identify any potential leaks, gaps, openings, that type of stuff uh, to really determine is it as waterproof as it needs to be, right? We're looking at the grounds, the roof, the appliances, the framing, uh, any kind of function is do the vehicle doors open, really uh, almost exactly like a, a resale home. But if there's an issue, we get to put a code number to it. That's, that's really the only difference between new construction and resale is mm -hmm. code violation. Yeah. Right? We're scrutinizing a little bit more on a new home than a resale. Because if I see a home that's 100 years old, I'm not going to scrutinize that super tight. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, there's mm -hmm. going to be stuff where it, there's allowances. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll be there all day and the house will never get sold and mm -hmm. all that. And then we got terminations and all that good stuff and, you know, all uh, that. <laughs> you know, we've, we've got to weigh that for sure. Yes, absolutely. Josh, Josh absolutely. next, please. Um, briefly, I just want to say custom homes versus spec. Um, spec homes, the 300th home is built not just differently, but better than the first home. Why? Mm -hmm. Anybody have any idea why? Because they, 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 they had an opportunity to get it right. They did it 300 times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's the thing, you know, I mean, in, in versus the custom home, the custom home builder, he's probably doing that home for the first time, almost every time, right? Mm -hmm. These super extravagant, multi-million dollar homes, like this is awesome. And there's 400 different angles. You know, I, personally for me as a home inspector, I just want a box. The fewer the angles, the better, but that's just ugly, right? We love yeah. our angles. We love our gables and our overpasses and all, all, all that fun stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, so that's the thing about really more on the custom home side, we end up finding a few more blemishes on a custom home side than we would on a spec home side. And then the buildings or the spec homes that are further in the neighborhood that we, they've already had a series of, of, of tries at that particular mm -hmm. style, right? Mm -hmm. So you get maybe three or four different, five different styles of a home in that neighborhood. They've already practiced it enough and they've got it figured out. So it ends up being easier. What's awesome too, really, is that these builders, they're catching on to what we're writing up. Mm -hmm. So, Because we'll go into a neighborhood and we can be in a neighborhood. We'll do like 30 or 40 inspections in a neighborhood. Clients talk, agents talk, and really sometimes the builder talks. And he'll mm -hmm. say, use this guy, use this guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, right? And then when we submit our information, we're having to write up fewer and fewer issues. Mm -hmm. the builder is mm -hmm. like catching on oh man this guy is always writing up this particular issue all right i gotta hit that let me go ahead and fix it right. first right. yeah yeah you yeah. get, yeah. get it right it's pretty awesome mm -hmm. okay all right next next one josh um i think i i, just, I went over this the only real difference between new homes and resale is is well i mean mm -hmm. it's you can't expect these older homes to be up to current code mm -hmm. you know? people will ask like this 1980s home like is it up to code well You'd have to knock the whole building down and redo it to get it up to code. But now, if yeah. it's a total renovation, Good where question. it's if, or thought, if it, then it so should. So, if it's a reno that requires mm -hmm. a permit, mm -hmm. right? If we're down to, be to the studs and they require mm -hmm. a permit, not just a permit, but even a CO, mm -hmm. those items then are assessed uh, like a new home, and mm -hmm. we are documenting violations. But we'll need to know that. So Nicole, if you went, so when you call us up and say, Jason, I need an inspection, I've got a reno and they don't have their CO yet. We need to make sure that we've got a new home inspector mm -hmm. that is capable of doing that. Cause mm -hmm. And now one other thing, since we're on the resales and I know this is a little bit off, but I wanted to ask your opinion about this as well. As listing agents, I know a lot of times I do encourage um, my sellers and investors to have a pre-inspection done um, mm -hmm. just so that they can identify any issues that may actually come up during the inspection and kind of be proactive with that. What are your thoughts about pre-inspections on resales? I don't mind them. Okay. Um, personally, I don't prefer them. Uh, every every inspector is going to be different, right? So mm -hmm. I, the issues that I find in a house can be different than the next guy. Mm -hmm. What we're hoping for is that we're both hitting the bigs. And then Got the it. little stuff, the minor stuff is different. You know, I just, you know, it's their opinion at that time, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And with, when it comes to pre-list inspections, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't want 
folk or clients to do everything on the list. Yeah. Only do the stuff that you know is just going to be ginormous money and that the buyer is then going to ask for. Mm-hmm. Right. In your in your opinion, Jason, what are those like the um, the items? Major structural. Yes. If mm-hmm. if your roof is toast and it needs to go, mm-hmm. do it. If your HVAC is toast and it needs to go, if it's old, if it's twenty years old but it runs, you don't need to change squat. Mm. I'm sorry, but you, you don't. Not even as a buyer. Like if if it's if it's twenty years old but it still works and it's being serviced on a regular basis, mm-hmm. I within the standards practice that, that that I go by, that we go by, we can say that it's old. And it's going to probably need to get changed out soon, but we can't recommend that it, need to, that it get changed out. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, stop me anytime. These are just typical issues. Uh, it's a threshold support up underneath the door, um, you know, kind of like a, a, a low lying area on the left side there where water could stand and puddle up against the house and then eventually mm-hmm. potentially run down into the basement or the crawl space below. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, caulking gaps, deck issues. Um, Josh, next, please. Um, this one here, broken or cut trusses, we see them all of the time, not just in pre-drywall, but in new home finals. So we go in the attic, we got broken or cut trusses. Go into unfinished basement, broken or cut trusses. Mm. These trusses, is there, a, a truss is, it's like a triangle. Right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's got the little webbing, the boards on the in, in in between of them, right, and then they're two feet apart, so two feet, two feet, two feet, and that that's a, that's a truss system, right? Every board or every two by four in a truss is a structural component. So if you cut one, that particular truss is compromised, mm-hmm. and you need an engineer's letter to repair it and get it done right. Okay. Right. This is extremely common and it is very easy to fix. Right. And it's really important, right? I would take it that these are issues that are very, very important. That's what holds the home together. Yeah. Together. Yeah. You know, you you got that. You're in trouble. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Right. So that's huge. But I think the beautiful thing is, is that you guys are great enough to the point to where it's like it doesn't matter whether you've seen it for the first time or not you're thinking yeah i've seen that before we got it fixed it's, it's good right right. Mm-hmm. right it's that mentality of like yeah dude i got it all and it's i got people i've seen all these issues it's no big deal and it's that's connected. great to, and that's great that you have as an agent you have we not expected to be experts on it but just to have a, enough information to know something like this is easy to fix so that if yeah. it is identified as a concern, because we do have that basic understanding, we can share that with our buyers or even our sellers and put them at ease about some things, you know, that that are identified during the inspection. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's there's definitely issues. We can, we can say it's an easy fix, but it's not something we let go. We cannot yes. let this go. Yeah. This got to yes. get fixed. Mm-hmm. Major. So it's. Maybe to Nikki Bless, it's the items, the issues that we find in these new construction homes that absolutely affect the home from day one and all the way through 10 and 20 years later. So even when you go to sell the home and the items that did not get addressed in the beginning by the builder that could have been found Mm. by the private home inspector is now something that is your problem as a client, as a homeowner, right, that you need to fix that could have been fixed. Mm-hmm. first place i like free, that more mm-hmm. free by the builder mm-hmm. like it okay josh next Hello, josh. and then that's just that's just another we don't we get end up getting a lot of roofing issues and mm-hmm. missing shingles and you know underlayment missing and boot flashing all kinds of fun stuff so we, we're constantly finding you know, I, 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 there's, there's at least like a, like a set 15 or 20 items that we're always kind of finding in those new homes. Mm-hmm. And it sounds silly, but it's all important. It's all important. Forgive me for going over. I apologize. No, no, that. you're fine. I, this um, has been extremely helpful. Was that, is that the last slide, Jason? Yeah. Yeah. We'll call it. All right. Does anyone have any questions for Jason? You can come off and mute or you can definitely put them in the chat if you'd like for us to ask him. Well, I have a question. Nikki Bless, did they answer your question and do you need more content? 
Okay. <laughs> yes, um, I do believe it, it did answer the question. The only thing that I, I haven't heard yet is the price, the cost of pre drywall inspection and actual inspection. I don't recall hearing it. Does that have a lot to do with the prop, the, the house itself size? All that other good stuff. So that's correct. Yeah, like it's any the, other inspection. Operations in the office can answer that question. You can mm -hmm. either uh, call in and get some get some pricing on everything. Um, you know, I mean, we we can go. We're in the you know three hundreds to five hundreds. I mean, it's just yeah. it really depends mm -hmm. on the size of the house and the type of inspection that we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I you, get, you get big homes with a lot of add-ons, you're going to end up getting a thousand dollar inspection fee. I mean, it's just you know right. you, you want it done, and, and and if we're thinking for the client, we can never be afraid of what's going to cost for peace of mind. Thousand dollars now saves you ten thousand dollars later. Which one right. do you want? Which one do you want? Right. So, yeah, typically, starting with like a condo, the prices start like around two eighty. And then with a single family home, again, depending on the age, as well as the size, uh, it starts around 350 and up. Mm -hmm. So it just all depends. Um, and again, the free warranties come with everything. We're not what you call the cheapest home inspection company, but we're not also the most expensive as well. Yeah, we're, we're middle high, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're middle of the road on the high, but I'm proud of that because I got real good guys. They know yes. what the heck they're doing, and I'm I'm okay. Personally, I'm okay with that. That's understandable. Yeah. So, I mean, just, so just to summarize, um, as it relates to what I would kind of encourage my new construction buyers in doing, with the, the pre-wall inspection is most important because we want to ensure that the structures are good, the framing is good, and everything is intact, so that it doesn't cost us, uh, you as the buyer more in the long run. Great. Did I get that correct? Yeah, that's that's great. I think one thing I would add is, is to say, you got to remember, Mr. and Mrs. Client, that the items that they find in the pre-drywall will get covered up and you'll never right. see them again. Mm -hmm. Right. Until mm -hmm. so they become an okay. issue. Love it. Okay. And Tina, the, the pre-drywall inspection, how much would that cost? Again, I, I, you're going to have to talk to the office about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's variable. Yeah. And we'll have that information sent out to everyone, Nikisha, so that you have okay. a, a breakdown of the cost and then that way you can go over it, um, you know, with your teams and then have it for your reference as well. Yeah. And the great Sorry. thing is now RIA is one of our preferred inspectors. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'll take that. Please take yeah. it. Good job. Good job, yeah. Tina Porch. All right. <laughs> Latina, again, on behalf of the Cole Realty Group Nation and myself, thank you guys so much for joining yeah. us today. It has um, been an eye-opening conversation. I know for me, I'm sure uh, a lot of the agents on the line as well. And we're just excited about what working with you guys and learning as much as we can to so educate our clients. Awesome. All Thank right. you. Thank you for having yes. us. Yes. Nation, anything Thank you want to add? Thank you so much. Yeah, grateful for for being able to participate and thank you for for listening to me ramble. <laughs> oh no, that was, it was good ramble. It, it was, was very good. Ramble, Jason. Yes, very good. <laughs> Until thank next time, guys. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Close in the Gap with the Cole Realty Group. We'll see you next week. Bye, bye, y'all. Bye. bye.